In this video, we're gonna build the view for displaying the list of blog posts from the home screen. So right now I have an app in front of me, but what I'm, what I'm gonna be doing is building the view to display all the blog posts that are being displayed in the home view. And if you know anything about you know, mobile development or web development in general, you know that generally it's not a good idea to just display everything that's in the database kind of right off the bat. You need to do, you need to use something known as pagination. And what pagination will do is it will divide all of the kind of blog post objects or whatever objects you're dealing with on the server up into batches and then you can kind of page through them. So you can see this like page number one here. If there was more blog posts, then there would be like page two, page three, and so on and so on. And it's especially important in mobile development because uh, that's why I had this app open here on the screen. So this is an app that communicates with a REST API. If I was to make a query, it queries the um, the the REST API and searches for whatever I, I clicked on. So I clicked on breakfast, so it looks for recipes that are involved in breakfast. And so what it does is it queries the first 10 results using pagination, and then when I scroll to the bottom of this list, you'll notice that there's a little loading animation. It's, it's pretty fast, there's that loading animation right there, and it's grabbing the last pa the next page of results before displaying all, I guess, it grabs the next page of results. So the key concept here to take away is that it doesn't grab all of the results at once. Because if it grabbed all the results at once, the phone could very easily become overwhelmed. You know, it would, you know, if there's say if there's a thousand results or ten thousand results or a million results, if you think of an app like Instagram, you know, you can't do that. You have to you have to query, you know, 10, 20, or 30, something like that. Once the user scrolls to the bottom of the list, then you then you query the next 10, 20, or 30. See there it's getting to the bottom of the list and it grabs the next ones. So this is this the same kind of behavior that we want to see on our server for the REST API. We, when we make our requests, we want to query page one. When they get to the bottom of page one, we want to query the next page. So that's what we're going to work on implementing in this video. All right, so the first step is I'm going to go into my site and go into settings and going to go into the REST framework sort of settings that we've been looking at inside this REST framework declaration. I'm going to copy what's there already, the default permission classes, and I'm going to add a default pagination class. So default pagination classes, or sorry, class, it's actually just class. So default pagination class, I'm going to go up here and we don't need these brackets actually too. So default pagination class, I'm going to write rest framework dot pagination dot page number pagination. That's going to be the default pagination that we're going to use. And we need to declare the default page size for this pagination. And for testing purposes, I'm going to set this to 1. But later, towards the end of this video, I'm going to set it to 10. But just for when we're testing, I'm going to set it to 1. Because if you take a look at our development environment, there's only three blog posts on here right now. So if I set a page size of 10, that doesn't really make sense. Either way, I'm still going to have just one page. So setting it to 1 at least assures us that we'll have uh, different pages for testing. So now that we have pagination added here, and I'm going to press Control S to save it. I'm going to go into blog, go into views, and we are going to create a view for displaying all of the blog posts on the home screen. And we're going to be doing, oh, I opened the wrong view. This is, um, we need to go into API views. And this is going to be a little different than what you've seen before because we are going to use class-based views. So far, everything I've done in this course, in the REST API course, and in the website building course, the one I did before this, has all been function-based views. Now we're going to use class-based views because they're just way easier to do this with. So I'm going to use class-based. Um, so first, I actually need to import the view that we're going to use. And I also need to import the pagination package too. So from REST framework dot pagination, import page number pagination. So this is the same one that we declared in the settings file. And then from REST framework dot generics. So I'm importing a generic view. This is going to be list API view. And you can see this in the documentation. So if you go to the Django REST framework documentation, uh, let's go to views. So I'm going to API guide, go into views. You can see here are the class-based views and you can take a look at the different ones that are available. So take a look at that if you, you want to know more about class-based views. But I'm going to show you everything you need to in this video, at least for what we're going to be using it for. So now let's go to the bottom and let's create this view. So class, this is going to be API 
blog list view. It's gonna be a list of blog posts. I wanna reference that list API view import. And now this is kind of the nice thing about class-based views. They're, the good thing is that they're super easy. They have a whole bunch of built-in functionality. The bad thing is that you don't, if you don't know how they work, you don't, it's not very explicit. So I don't recommend beginners starting with class-based views because they don't show you everything that's happening behind the scenes. So as a beginner, it kind of just looks like magic, which it is, but it's, it's very confusing if you're a beginner. So basically this has a bunch of attributes that we can just set. One of them is the query set. So I wanna go blog post dot objects dot all. And then by default, what that's gonna do is it's gonna query all of those blog posts and it's gonna pass it through the context to the view. So again, this is gonna seem like magic, but don't worry, I'm gonna kind of explain everything and you'll see examples at the end. Next, we are gonna uh, declare a serializer class parameter. And that's gonna be equal to the blog post serializer that we've used before. We need to set an authentication class. So authentication cla class is actually, this is a list. It's gonna be token authentication is what we're going to use. I don't think I, I imported token authentication, so we're gonna to need to do that also up here. So from rest framework dot uh, authentication, import token authentication, so saving that. Scrolling down to the bottom and then there is our token authentication class. Next is a permission classes attribute. So permission classes equals is authenticated. So no surprises there, same thing that we've used before. And then last is the pagination class. So pagination class equals page number pagination. And that is it, that's all we need to do. That's the beautiful thing about a class-based view. It's kind of, it, it's like magic, like I said. It just handles kind of everything in the background. It handles the errors, it'll handle the authentication. But the thing is, if you don't know how they work, it just, it's too, it's a little too confusing, I think, for beginners. So um, yeah, that's, that's why I used function-based views kind of leading up to now. But now I can't avoid using this class-based view because they're just so convenient in this situation. It'd be a lot harder to handle kind of the logic that I want done in this view if I didn't use them. All right, so the last step is adding this to the URL. So I'm gonna copy the API blog list view, go to urls.py. I'm going to paste in this new view that we just created. I'm gonna copy this line. This is gonna be a list, and we need the uh, the, the uh, class-based view. And then you need to write dot as underscore underscore view and surround that in brackets. And that's how you use a class-based view. Everything else is the same. So you import the view, but you have to write as view and then use a bracket. And let's press Control S to save that. And let's go into uh, our development environment and take a look and see what's, actually we don't need to look in the development environment. We need to use Postman to send a request and see if we can actually see these blog posts. So I'm gonna write API blog and then list, because that is the URL. Let's search that and it looks like we get an error. So I think I know what the problem is. This is kind of a weird Python thing or a weird Django thing, I guess you would say. So we need to go into this list view and because these are lists, we have to add a comma to each one of these. So I'm pressing control S, let's go back to uh, Postman and send the request and then there you go, that actually does work. So very, very kind of weird that, uh, that that's the way that works. So anyway, um, looks like the request is working but the pagination isn't working. But the pagination isn't working because we haven't appended the page parameter. So if I do, so you can see that it says count number three. I believe that means because there's three actual pages. So if I do page equals one, oh no, that didn't work. So the pagination is not working correctly. So if we go to settings, oh, it's because I have this set to 10. So that needs to be one. I'm pressing control S to save that. Um, now if I just search the regular list, press send, there you can see I get one and it says count equals three to three, meaning there is three pages worth of results. So if I now go question mark e page equals one, I hit send, there's that same page because that was page number one, but now I can do um, page number two. There you go, I can see page number two, and uh, you can see it's giving me a link to the next one too. So it says page number three is the next one, and then there's page number three. So it's it's grabbing the individual blog posts. So let's let's look here. Let's go open to Postman again. This page three is Django, Django, Django. That means it's uh, the first one right here, page three, Django, Django, Django. Page two, we expect to be this one, the one that says other title. There's other title. And then page one is the new title. So let's look here. And then there's new title. So we have our pagination working correctly. We have our list view work, working correctly. We're basically ready to 
query this stuff from some other technology using pagination. So before I continue, I wanna make sure that I change this back to 10. Um, I'm not really using 10 for any particular reason. It's just typically what I use my set my page sizes to. Um, but you know, don't be afraid to do 20 or even 30 results depending on how much data is being retrieved. And what I mean by data is like the size of the data. So basically in this, in this case, the image size would be the determining size because the image is gonna be the biggest part of that blog post, the biggest piece of data. So whatever you think, I, I usually set it to 10. So now in the next video, we're gonna work on adding search functionality to the REST API. Because right now on the website, I could search you know, uh, you know, whatever I want and it will filter that stuff um, and find blog posts that match that. So I wanna be able to do this in the app. If I was to compare that with the, other, the application, the mobile application that I showed you at the beginning of the video, there is a little search bar up here and I could type something like, uh, I could type like bacon up here and I click enter and then that's going to find recipes with bacon in them. So I want the same kind of thing to happen with my mobile app interacting with this blog. So I want to add a search bar and then that search bar will search the REST API.